So welcome to Ireland in sort of coming towards December when the sun starts to drop down and it's only uh, 12 o'clock in the day and it's already starting to get dark. Isn't that wonderful? Anyway, this is the Toyota Pro Ace. I had planned to do a series of van reviews. Unfortunately, COVID lockdown completely obliterated that idea. So I'm kind of stuck with the one because Toyota dropped it down to me. So, so that worked out kind of nice. This is a group collaboration between PSA and Toyota. So Peugeot, Citroen, Opel, Vauxhall, Toyota, all get together, make this vehicle. So that's pretty much where this vehicle lives in the world right now. But Toyota have sprinkled a few extra bits on it to make it a little bit different from the rest of the group. Plus it looks a little bit different as well. Anyway, what we're going to do is have a look around the outside of it. If you want to get more van reviews on this channel, please leave me a comment down below and a like to let me know that that's what you're interested in because I want to expand the channel out a little bit into not just cars, but also into commercial vehicles, vans, and so on, right? So we want to see what these are like. So I'm going to compare this to the rest of them that are out there. Let's have a look at this Toyota Pro Ace. So sit back, relax, and let's do this. <laughs> So, you know, we normally look at the outside of the van with this thing, and I'm going to do that in some little bits of it, okay? But really, the sign writing area here is this area around this part, or you can wrap the van if you wish to as well. Uh, down the bottom of the doors, every one of them have this kind of scuff plate, which you can see the plastic plate here that comes out with the door. That goes along the back of the vehicle as well. I'm um, on the passenger side of the vehicle. Now, a complaint I would have is this, the wing mirrors are a little bit small. I think they're just a, just a tad small, just need to be a slight bit taller a little bit more bulky somewhere. There's some bits that are kind of invisible because of the length of the van. This is the short wheelbase one as well. Some interesting curves and bits and flat bits on it. Round the front of the vehicle, it is pretty standard. Does look like the Toyota face that you see on the rest of the Toyota range, particularly with that bar. Just to draw your attention to this part, being plastic here, and that being some sort of metal, but along here comes up to a very fine point on one end, which could be easily wrenched out of place. So just be careful of that on both ends of the vehicle. Now, if I come around to the loading areas, which is the important areas on vans, of course, you have a sliding door on this side. This is speckable on either side or both sides of the vehicle. Vehicle. But I want to show you a couple of interesting features back here, which is quite cool. This is a good loading area. It's a mid-spec one, so you do get a plastic floor and you get this big uh, metal um, bulkhead here in the center of it, okay? So you can see there's plenty of room. We do have a light back here. It's not LED, it's halogen. There's loads of holes and connections and places to put things because this actually comes as a car as well. You have a five seat or seven seat car of this. So you can actually see places where you put seat belts and stuff. But all those are open for shelves or whatever else you want to put in here when it's a van, as a van. Uh, wheel arch intrusion is very low. You can see there where the wheel arch just intrudes a little bit into the cabin, but it's actually quite low. We come to the loading area at the back of the middle. But I want to show you this thing. This is, if you want to put something longer than the cabin area here, you flip that up and you lower that down. Sounds easy, right? Just, just put that in the floor, right? You got this. When I open the door, so I'm gonna bring it around here now, we're coming around this side, and I pull this handle up here at the top, that drops the seat flat. And now I can look all the way down to the back of the vehicle. Not only that, if it's even longer than this, if it's, if it's longer than this part, they've made a hole in the dashboard for it to go all the way in. How awesome is that feature? I think that's very clever. Why is NASA taking a car? But anyway, that's very easy to do. Just click that back up into position there like that. You come around here and put this back up and it all goes back as if that never happened. Now you've also got hand places to hang things, handle stuff. There's, it's just like there'll be somewhere in here for basically everything for shelves in the whole show, okay? You can see the cutout is there for a second door on the far side or a door on either side, whichever side you want. This one happens to be on the passenger side. Slides for doors really easy. That closes really easy. Then we come around to the back, you can see there's a good arch, wheel arch space in there. You can have bigger wheels, or you can carry more weight. More weight is probably more beneficial to be honest with you. Um, Toyota and Pro Ace is always written on the back. Now we're at the back doors, okay? So the back doors open like that, side on and side on, yeah? Now that's a good open space. 
But if I wanted to drive a forklift up to here, I'd hit these doors, okay? So on the bottom of every door, they've included this thing, which allows that to happen. You can push the doors open wider. Okay, so same on both doors. Just push that out of the way and the door opens wider. And now you have a completely open rear end to bring forklifts up to, or if you're in a parked position like I am right now and you're carrying something large, you can push the door out of your way and still get in and put things into the boot, into the loading area. Uh, in the loading area, we do have tie down for here. As I said, we have a, a lamp up here in the corner. It's just, a, it's a pretty dim light. I would prefer to see a good LED light maybe in the middle of the cabin or maybe here pointing inwards or maybe here pointing downwards, which would light up, uh, you know, if I had a light here, I could point it downwards and light up the area behind the vehicle as well when I'm loading at nighttime, which this time of the year, the sun goes up and down so quick. Uh, to close that up, it just, just closes, just pull the clocks on. Door shut, end of story, easy peasy. Very, very easy stuff to drive on with. Now that is van capacity. What I'm going to do now is cut to a little section that explains its weight, its loading capacity, and the size of the areas inside. So check back with me in a minute. We go for a little spin around the inside of the car. The Pro S City is meant as an urban vehicle, which is why it comes with a five speed box and also why it comes in two lengths, the short wheelbase and long wheelbase. If you opt for the short wheelbase, you get a cabin area of 0.4 meters cubed, but the loading area becomes 3.3 meters cubed, which is quite big. The long wheelbase comes in 3.9 meters cubed, which is also much bigger and you can have doors on both sides of the vehicle. It's very practical and large inside. The full length of the short wheelbase vehicle is 4.4 meters. Uh, the full length of the loading area is 1.8 meters and can take two pallets and up to 4.3 meters cubed and one ton into the rear area. The short wheelbase payload is 650 kgs. That's on the 75 horsepower, but 1,000 kgs if you opt for the test car, which is 100 horsepower. If you go for the long wheelbase, you will get the 100 horsepower one automatically, so one ton straight away. Wheels are all steel, 15 inch steel on the 75 horsepower and 16 inch steel with hubcaps on the 100 GX. Both engines are a 1.5 litre diesel and all units are 5 speed manual. One is 75 horsepower, one's 100 horsepower. They're both Euro 6 engines. Both have fuel tanks that are 53 litres. Combined WLTP figures for the car is 5.5 or 5.7 litres per hundred kilometres. Uh, that's from the 75 horsepower. The 100 horsepower puts out 5.4 to 6.1. In tests, I have found we're getting more like 5 litres per hundred kilometres as a standard amount to come out of the car. Now in here, it looks like a Citroen. You know what I mean? You got these uh, air vents that are all very Citroen thing, but this looks like a, like a Toyota. And, there's bits and pieces from all kinds of things here. So a couple of things I want to point out that are different in the Toyota version than the ones you get from PSA. This one has a standard airbag on that side of the car. So Toyota are acutely aware that these are actually really second cars in the house and they're being used by families and people to drop kids to school and do all the usual school run stuff. And indeed I've done it since we've had it here. The kids absolutely love sitting in the middle of this show. <laughs> it looks so cool. Uh, so we've been dropping the kids to school in this as well, and they're aware of that. So there's seat belts for two passengers here, airbags on that side, and this stereo comes with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard. So that's already in the car. So this kind of family-friendly stuff is also available in this car, uh, and a lot of it as standard. But looking at our kit, ignore this. This is my phone holder. <laughs> that's mine. <laughs> uh, I'll leave a link if you want to get that. I, I've been testing this. I bought that. But I've been testing this called Van Mass. Uh, I'll leave a link to it down below if you want to have a look at it. it. I find it very good. It's just stuck to the dash, not to the window. Just, just air suction. I don't even know how to do that. It's very good though. Anyway, moving on with the actual car. So uh, you need a key for the car. You need a key to start it. So we give it a, a little kick on. As you hear that rumble of diesel <laughs> started outside. Ah, that's quite normal, I'd expect that. So, what have I got for my money? Well, first of all, storage is good, so there's a great big glove box over there. There's some sort of a, I don't know what that's supposed to be, a coin holder thing here, I don't know what it is. Up here, we have cup holders, which I find are very hard to get squeezed, very easy. The cup sinks into them, and then it gets squeezed so hard you can't get it back out without burning yourself. Just a little one. On the top of the dash, huge big 
cubby hole up there. Behind the radio, there's another cubby hole just there. And then you have the stereo system here, which I'll hook up in a second. And then we have the air conditioning down here. There is air conditioning in this. There's an AC button. Uh, I haven't really been using it much. It's very cold every morning. Then down here, we have a lovely big cubby hole that suits a phone perfectly, as you can see down there. It sits in there, or whatever you want to put in there. Um, and then moving down, we have a five-speed gearbox. Handbrake is here, sort of a coin holder thing here. And that's your lot. You will fit another human being in here, but you can see even with my hand, there really isn't much room. And a big criticism I would have of a car is the size of this box thing. This thing here is too big. Uh, and I really do feel that that's, that's in, because your knee rests against it when you're driving. And then when someone sits in the middle, they either put their legs on that side of it or that side of it or both sides of it. And there's no way to get around that thing. So that third seat is really only a convenient seat, if you know what I mean. So I'll hook up my phone and you can see that Apple CarPlay is there as standard on the system. It's already popped up there. You can see it's, it's hunting for BBC Six Music. Uh, already I've gone straight into car play system uh, which allows you to do everything in here so you, you straight back into Apple CarPlay it works perfectly well when it's connected by wireless not wireless Apple CarPlay but it does have wireless Bluetooth so it's, even if you don't want to use CarPlay or Android Auto you still hook up and run it by Bluetooth if you wish voice commands work perfectly the mic is actually pretty good in this usually the mics are fairly ropey and at speed you probably don't hear anything now moving up the cabin, which is an unusual thing for us to do, there's actually storage up here as well. So you can see in there for yourself that there's actually pretty much decent storage all around inside of there. Don't put things that are wet up here that will drip because there's actually holes straight through, as you can see there, my finger going on, right? And behind me then I have the bulkhead, which is there, which is uh, the rest of this, of this cabin. The cabin itself is very cosy, lads. I have to say, if I was stuck Stuck in the mornings driving somewhere, I wouldn't really mind driving in this, but I will point out a very vital fact. One more criticism, I'm sorry everybody, but there is a couple of criticisms of this one. The window demister is rubbish. <laughs> it takes forever to get warm, and then it takes forever to actually clear the windscreen. It really does. It stays damp on the inside for quite some time, and even after you've been driving for a while, you can still see the ring of damp around the outside of the windscreen. Really, I'm not sure it's the fan or the direction of the fan or what it is, but it really does take a long time to clear that windscreen. So that's a big no-no. I would like to see a heated windscreen going in to combat that, to be honest with you, because it is a big problem in the morning. Even when you turn on all the window the mystery things that you can, it turns out to be still a problem every single time. When it's at full temperature, it's a really cozy cabin. Really, really nice. Just lovely insulated thing. We're going to go for a little drive now, see how we get on with driving it, right? So let's do that. It's a very unusual sunny day, so I'm not sunny day, it's not unusual to be sunny, it's sunny and it's winter time, so the wind, the sun falls low very early, so I've added a camera to combat the dark that will happen from time to time on the other camera, the big camera, because I know it's going to get dark there very quick. <laughs> right, let's go up through the town then, we'll go up through the town, see what it's like, right, because this is the pro city, so we should be going in city mode at all times. The gearbox is really good, but it's kind of French, right? So there is a sort of a vagueness to each of the gears. It does feel like it's kind of bobbling about a little bit in each of the gears. A bit of road works going on up along here. It's a pain in the hole, to be honest with you. Just kind of driving the other side of the road to go around, you know? And as usual, there's three or four people staring into a hole, which is essentially, but what the lamb of God was going on there by? That's a one-way street, the other way. He's driving backwards up a one-way street. Would you believe? How mad is that, lads? We caught it on camera as well, in high definition, for 1080p for everyone to see. Anyway, times they are a-changing, lads. There's a man walking in the middle of the road with a walking stick. Does that matter? This is a... Holy moly, man. Would you give him the footpath, would you? Good lad. As this is Port Leash, where, you know, hepatitis B is a vitamin deficiency. So, what I do really like is the maneuverability of the car. The turning circle is actually really good on this. I need to get out of that sun, because I'm squinting a lot. Um, the turning circle is actually really good on this. I need a bit of vitamin D. This is good. <sighs> yeah. Burn me, baby. <laughs> 
Right, let's go up this road here. Um, I like to turn and circle, and that's that's one of the good side effects of this car is that because Peugeot, Peugeot tend to do a really good turning circle. Um, so I quite like that. I'm just changing the heater so it heats my toes. Ah, the lovely, the lovely push button with the knobs is exactly what you're looking for. So driving along like this, a few things to note. One is the suspension system is really good and I do find it very proactive in keeping you nice and cosseted from the road. It's actually really, really nice. Uh, handling wise is pretty good and also sound levels. The sound level, even though I have a huge cavity behind me, which is essentially what that area is back there, it's well insulated for me and I really don't hear it all that much. Now, if it was full, obviously, and things rattling around inside of it, I might hear it a bit more, but there's very little in there now. Other my camera gear, my drone, a couple of yokes in there, nothing major. So, so there's, there's an element of um, it's empty, which is probably why, another reason why it's kind of quiet. Now, the other day I drove down to Athlone and back to pick up a few bits, uh, and I was doing a bit of jobs down there, and I took this to drive down in, and I found it to be really just a nice thing to poodle about in. It's just lovely. It's just a lovely vehicle. In its own little way, it just gets on with its job, and I really like that. That's really something to be appreciated, you know? Now, um, it's a work van, and for that, I like the seating position. So when you're sitting, you're sitting slightly above the pedals, so you feel like you're in a proper van. I find that Caddy feels like a Golf, kind of. You're, fit, you're sitting in it, but you're sort of behind the pedals. But I find with this, I'm sitting above the pedals like I do in something more like a transport or some of the bigger vans. Uh, and this being a city one, of course, they've made it a slightly shorter wheelbase. And they've given you a little selection of engines. There's actually three models to choose from from scratch on this and it starts about 20 grand so it's pretty good value for a brand new vehicle like this isn't a, an older vehicle this is this is a brand new unit between the two now the conglomeration between the companies have made it that price because it's a bit cheaper to build because they've all gotten together to build vehicles you know what i mean it's not just one of them it's it's four companies essentially but Vauxhall and open is the same company now, would I want to see this? And I, I'm going to be dead honest with you here. I've fallen for this vehicle quite a bit. Um, it's actually made me desire to own a van. Hold on a second, Bob. You're, you're like a petrol head. Ooh, you know, there's something about vans, lads. The practicalities of them are amazing. They're so practical, so much room in them. So It's so nice to just ponder about in the van. If you know, you know, right? If you're a van driver, you probably know what I'm talking about already. But this is, I love like California and, and Transporter and the bigger vehicles. But this little van, this is, this is definitely up my mind to having a van as a personal vehicle. Now, how that rocks up with tax and insurance and all that sort of stuff, that'll be a different story entirely because I wouldn't be using it as a commercial sense. I'd maybe want the van, but I wouldn't necessarily want a commercial aspect of the van. So acceleration, torque is really good for that engine. There's a good engine selection as well. It's not a bad little vehicle for engines, choosing your engine. Now you only have five speed box, so it doesn't cruise as well at 120 as maybe you'd like, but that's because it's the city edition and the object here is low speed driving rather than high speed driving. So sitting out in the motorway every day, it's gonna start chewing a little bit more fuel. Although I am getting on average about five liters per hundred kilometers and a little bit better here and there from that little engine out front so it's really like it does a seriously good job of being fuel efficient that's 120 it's not overly loud in here you know you can turn up the radio here and be hearing it quite easily uh, so it's it's a nice place to be and it's so cozy like it's I, i'm gonna have to turn on the heater because it's actually so cozy i'm too warm <laughs> so it's not overly noisy as you can hear there's cruise control on this one as well. It's in that awkward place that, that the PSA group mount cruise control down here in this weird little stock you can't see. I'm not overly concerned by that. By the way, can you believe that that, that phone holder's actually just sitting there on, on the plastic? Though even they, even the good sucker paddy things for my cameras don't stick to that plastic, but that stuff does. It's good, isn't it? <laughs> I was only uh, 15 pound, I think. So it was okay, like it was a good price. More road works! Um, now, the complaints that I made earlier, which would be, number one, 
the speed of clearing the front windscreen is a problem. It is really a problem. When you're clearing the front windscreen in the morning, you may come out and start the car first because the mist is on the inside of the windscreen and it's very hard to clear. Uh, two, when you want to wash the windscreen, it comes out of the wipers. So you can see there, it's spraying out of the wipers, so it doesn't really have an even pattern on the windscreen, but it does an adequate job of clearing the windscreen. Also, I have automated wipers in this, cruise control in this, electronic handbrake, electric windows on both sides. I have a remote release for the doors here. When I unlock the, dr the driver and passenger door unlocks, but the rear doors don't, uh, you have to unlock that again with the key, which is pretty good for a security point of view because you can actually get out of the car and not know that your back doors are open. Uh, and if any of the doors are open, it comes up on a dashboard here in front of you. I'm aware that you don't get, uh, I'm aware that they're the same vehicle as PSA Group. And why would I buy a Toyota with PSA? But I pointed out that airbag is standard on that side, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto is standard on that side. A few more extra little options and things just to separate the two out. And you know, it's, it's a Toyota, right? That's it, and it doesn't matter who makes it, Toyota's gonna to have to warranty it. <laughs> that's that's where that comes into it. That's in my mind is something I'd be thinking about. Okay, hopefully you've learned what you need to know about the Toyota Pro Ace. Uh, if you have any more questions down below or you want to see more vans on this channel, please leave a comment and let me know that vans are your thing. I like vans. There's an Opel combo in front of me. That is the same vehicle right there. So that car that's in front of me right now is the Opel version of this car or this is the Opel, this is the Toyota version of that Opel, or whatever way, whoever made it. Uh, anyway, no matter what happens, thank you very much for watching. Um, if you've only watched this video, you should hit the subscribe button. There's thousands more videos like this on the channel. You can join me on places like TikTok or Instagram or Twitter or Facebook. All of those things are linked down below. And if you really want to get in touch with me, there's ways to do it by going to streamerlinks.com forward slash Bob Flavin. That is also linked down below. That will bring you into all the things that I talk about on the channel, including things like the Fixit OBD2 reader from the US, um, the dash cams that I use, this thing that I use here, the phone holder, they're all linked in that streamer link. So I thought it was much easier to find it that way than to try and put them down as individual links at the bottom. So go to streamerlinks.com forward slash Bob Flavin and you find all the ways you can get in touch with me and all the things I talk about in this channel. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. I will get around to answer as much as I possibly can. Christmas is coming, boys. The goose is getting fat, so we're not going to be far away from trying to get some Christmas stuff done. So any support you can give to the channel is really good. Uh, you're, you're very kind uh, in all your respects. All the stuff we've done for the Sunday Service, the Sunday Service uh, Card Year Award, all of that stuff, that's all done by you guys. You know That all happened because you guys pulled it together. Uh, and the awards are going out now to the car companies. We've already got some press coverage from the car companies and things, so it's really, really good to see how that happens. Anyway, I'm born to shy how you am, sure. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and until the next time, I will see you on the far side.